Okay, I'm going to talk about Exmorlin, um, also known as EP23905, MF6003, and Hexrelin. It is the most powerful of the GHRPs, the growth hormone re re releasing peptides, and is actually based on GHRP6. It's a hexapeptide with 28 amino chain acid, sorry, amino acid chain. Um, and basically, it's the strongest of the lot. Uh, it is the most effective of increasing GH levels, but as a result of that, it can cause insensitivity and it does cause issues with plactin sides and cortisol sides. So you need to bear that in mind, and I have seen mild gyno caused by it. Um, however, the desensitization is reversible, just needs stopping for a period of time. Um, now, if you take, now uh, there has been a trend of people taking exogenous GH and then using peptides, where the thought process behind this is that they use the peptides, it will stimulate and stop their own production from ceasing. However, it's been shown that if you take either GH or IGF-1 with exmorlin, you will blunt its performance. So it's pointless, effectively. Um, obviously, side effects-wise, you're talking most common ones, carpal tunnel site, pain in the hands and feet, uh, water retention, field of tiredness. So generally, most people will take this stuff at night, so it gives them more restful sleep and they don't get tiredness during the day. Elevated prolactin, elevated cortisol. Not really much else has been noted. Uh, it's also worth noting that there's been no fat decrease, but there has been an increase in lean muscle mass. Doses usually range between 100 and 200 micrograms a day. Obviously, it can be higher, but you've got to bear in mind those sides. And that is really it, you know. Um, and again, unlike GHRP6, even though it's based on that, and even though it does still act through the ghrelin receptor, Appetite increase is not particularly notable with this product. Um, GHRP6 is, GHRP2 isn't, and Exmorolin isn't either. Obviously, MK67 is the daddy for appetite. Um, and yet, this is the most powerful of this group of drugs. So, it seems to go a bit against what you'd expect. And that is pretty much it. So, we will continue peptides next week. And we'll probably start looking at the GH, GNRH, sorry. Um, I've lost my complete train of thought there. Sorry. We will continue with peptides next week, and we'll start looking at the, the releasing hormone ones as opposed to the GHRPs. So we'll look at CJ1295, and then we'll start getting into IGF, Ally 3, and all those sort of things as well. And we'll do MT2 and, and everything else, PT141, TB500, BP, well, BPC157, etc., etc. So I'll catch up with you guys soon. Okay, take care.